What happens to a comedian when you take away their audience? This is a show where comedians perform to a camera alone in a room while the audience watches from an entirely different room. All the comedians will be wearing noise-canceling headphones so they'll have no idea how their set is going. This is 7 Minutes in Purgatory. Are we ready to start the show? Please put your hands together for Mr. Joel Kim Booster! Oh boy, and the last time uh, I was in a truck by myself with just a camera, it was a trap, so <laughs> this is very triggering. So I guess let's just get some of the like housekeeping out of the way, you know, like the elephant in the room. My name, it's super weird, you know, like Joel Kim Booster, what's up with that? It doesn't match his face, you know? Joel up top, that's pretty Jewish, you know, and then Kim in the middle, that seems better. And then Booster, which is a word, you know, not a name. I get it, it's strange, you know, I don't understand it either. Um, but the reason I have that sort of weird name is because I was adopted in the mid 80s by a nice Midwestern white couple, like many Korean babies. You guys, if you grew up in the mid 80s, you probably know that Korea was the seamless of babies. You know, they would just fly a baby Straight over, no questions asked, no fees. Growing up, like, I knew I was gay before I knew I was Asian. It's very, you know, lots of laughter, lots of laughter. Mm -hmm. He's gay. Um, but it was, like, strange for me growing up because I don't meet a lot of, like, cultural expectations of what an Asian person should be, you know? Like, I'm terrible at math. I don't know karate, you know? My dick is huge, you know? So it's just like... It's, so difficult for me. I don't actually know, though, if my dick is that big because every time I look at it, it's pixelated. So <laughs> it's really, it's anyone's guess uh, at this point. I really don't know. I'm sure a couple perverts got a real kick out of that. Uh, I don't understand people who don't masturbate. Like, I, I don't get it. You know, like, make absolutely no noise at all if you masturbate constantly. You know, like, <laughs> That's what I thought, you know, everybody does it. Everybody, I, you know, if I said make some noise, I should be able to hear it from out here in this van because everybody does. That's actually the hardest part about being single for me right now is just like all the Saturday and Sunday afternoons I spend in my bed just like, don't masturbate again, don't masturbate again, don't masturbate again. And then just like a conflicting voice that pops in and is like, yeah, but who are you saving all these loads for, Joel? You know, like, who's waiting for all these loads? No one, you know? And it's tough. I feel like when you've been single for as long as I have, you get a lot of, like, unsolicited advice. Like, I hear so often, like, Joel, you must play hard to get. You must play hard to get, which is very difficult for me to do because I'm very easy to get, you know? I've <laughs> just been tricked into a lot of situations. I am in a van right now, you know? Um, I'm so available that in the last calendar year, this is 100% true, I have been stood up by three different guys on three different first dates. The hardest part about that for me is not knowing how those guys died, you know? <laughs> like, what happened? Was it a grease fire? Was it an attack? I just, such a different curve in the gay community. Like, in Chicago, where I'm from, I'm like a solid seven. Here in New York, I'm like a six. And then, you know, in LA, I'm like a solid burn victim. You know, <laughs> like, it's not good. Like, can you see? Can you see the, like, terrible makeup that I just, like, kicked over my adult acne? I'm very hormonal. I'm very hormonal. Well, I was a pretty gay kid growing up. And it was never more apparent than it was 1994. I wanted what every little boy in the nation wanted for Christmas that year. You guys probably know what it is. Just like scream it out with me. I can't hear you, but I know you'll be saying it with me. The Crimp and Curl Pony by the Cabbage Patch Company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I wanted it and my mom, she was super cool. She got it for me. My dad, not as excited. He looked at my mom and he was like, Janet, what, what the fuck? Like, this is a girl's story. And that's it. I'm gone, bye. Give it up for Joe! All right, Joel, how was that for you? I did not enjoy that. <laughs> I got in there and I was like, no, this is, a, I'm living, like this is a physical manifestation of a panic attack right now. Like, uh, I'm just gonna gobble up some Xanax and, you know, uh, forget it ever happened.